How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can keep your computer running in tip top shape. I've got seven monthly maintenance tips that you can do, and then a couple tips that you can do probably like once a year, less often than that. All of these are really easy and really shouldn't cost you anything. Now before we jump in, I wanna quickly thank the sponsor of this video, which is myself, and actually my second brand new channel that I just talked about recently. It's called Actual School, What They Should Have Taught You. Just like the name suggests, it's gonna be about useful videos about financial and investing advice, life pro tips, and just skills in general. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go check it out, see what kind of videos I have up on there already. There's a few already. So check it out and be sure to subscribe if you're interested. And of course that link will be right in the description. All right, so let's get into these tips. And again, these should not be taking long at all. You can set aside like an hour, once a month, knock them all out very easy. So first up, we have uninstall any unused programs. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I'll go through and install a program, use it once, never use it again, and then who knows, it might be starting up or it might just be taking off space in the background. So go through your list of apps in Windows and just see if there's anything that you know you're not using anymore. Now, if you're not sure what a program does at all, you've never seen it before, it might have been something that was pre-installed with the computer you bought. So in that case, it might be something that you should just leave alone if you're not a computer expert. But if you do recognize what it is, you know what it does, and you know you don't need it, then it's definitely easy to just uninstall it and then free up that space and that memory potentially. And the good thing about this is the first time you do it, you might clear out a whole bunch of different programs, but then every time you do it once a month, then it gets easier and easier because you might not have even installed any programs in that time. And actually on Windows 10, it's really easy because you can literally sort by install date and then you can just see if any of the programs you installed most recently, you're still using, and then just uninstall them from there. But once you get to programs that you are still using, you just let them go. All right, next up, number two, this is definitely an important one, but you probably saw this coming. It's check any startup programs that you don't want starting up with Windows. Now hold on, because even if you already knew this one, you might not have realized there's actually at least three different ways a program can potentially start up with Windows. The first is the easiest to go through. It's through the startup list on the task manager. So what you can do is press control, shift, escape, that'll bring up the task manager. You go into the startup tab, and this will list a bunch of different programs that are automatically starting up with Windows, and then you can look through them. And again, if you know what a program does, and you're like, I don't want this starting up with Windows, you can just disable it, and then you can always re-enable it if you want to later. But just like with the uninstalling, if you see something that is starting up, you have no idea what it does, it might be something that's slightly important. So perhaps look up what the program is first, and then make a decision. But if you know you don't use it, or you know that you only use it occasionally and you wanna actually have to run it before it starts up and it's taking up resources, then you can just disable it there and then it'll only run when you run it. Now next, a program may also start up even if it's not in the actual startup list, if it's in the startup programs folder. Now to get to this, you can type in this path into the start menu, just hit enter and it'll bring you to the location. Or you can just manually go to the path by going to C, users, app data, roaming, Microsoft, Windows, start menu, programs, startup, and that's the full folder. And here you'll probably find some shortcuts to programs, and this is a folder where Windows will actually run anything in this folder at startup. So this is actually a good way, if you want a certain program or thing to open up with Windows on startup, this is how you can do that. You can just add a shortcut to whatever that thing is into this folder. So that's kind of like a bonus tip. Now, if you're still seeing a program that's starting up with Windows and you're not sure how, the third place to check is to see if it's an actual service Service. So you can do this again by going to the task manager, there's a services tab, or you can go into the start menu, type in services.msc, and this will bring up the services manager. Now, don't worry if this looks really complicated. If you have no idea what you're looking at here, then it might just be better to not mess with it. But basically, a service is kind of like a startup program, but it runs completely in the background. It doesn't necessarily have any window that opens up or user interface. It just purely runs in the background most of the time in the case of a service. But sometimes there are services that may run a program and then it does open up. So you can look through the service list here for the thing that is starting up and you know you don't want it to. And then what you can do is change the startup type to manual and then that should make it so it'll only run the service if you actually run the program. Do be careful though in this window, you might see a lot of stuff that you don't recognize and don't think that this means, oh, I don't use that. I'm gonna disable all these and run it manually because there might be some important stuff that other programs depend on. So again, be a little bit careful maybe only disable services or make them run manual if you specifically know exactly what it is 
and you know you don't want it running up at startup. But if you're too worried about that, maybe it's better to just not touch these at all. And actually there is a fourth place that could potentially be the source of a startup program, and that is the task scheduler. So you can find this by searching it in the start menu, task scheduler, and then look to see if there's any tasks in there that run at startup and then run that program. And then you can either disable it or delete it or whatever. But again, be careful because there might be some important schedules in there. All right, so believe it or not, that was all just number two. So kind of a long tip, but multiple parts. So now we can move on to maintenance tip number three. And that is to check for any Windows updates and software updates. Now Windows does automatically run updates, but there are plenty of optional updates that may not be installed automatically unless you actually go and look for them, like drivers, for example. So what you can do is go into the settings and then update and then look for any optional updates and then check for those and then maybe install them. And this also applies to any other software you use regularly. So for example, your graphics cards, when's the last time you update your graphics cards drivers? Maybe never, you can usually just go on either Nvidia or AMD's website. And then usually they have an installer you download and it automatically detects the card and stuff like that. And it's usually a good idea to just make sure your graphics cards updates are on the latest version so everything stays running well. And then again, for any software you use regularly, not a bad idea to just kind of make sure that you have the latest version of it. You might be missing out on features you didn't even know. Usually programs do have a section in the help drop down that says check for updates, stuff like that. All right, moving on to the next tip, which is to make sure your automatic backup is actually working. Now I'm assuming by this point, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, that you do have some sort of automatic backup running. And that is awesome. That is essential. But I would say about once a month, just kind of go in and actually double check that it's actually backing up, just kind of making sure. So for example, if you have an external drive, just kind of click into it every once in a while and see, okay, yeah, here are some recent files that I was using and did create and they're actually in the backup. So it's just a little bit of peace of mind. Or alternatively, if you're using a third party software, not like Windows automatic backup, you can usually go in and check and it'll tell you the last time an update was run. So you can make sure that it does run it on schedule. It's way better than kind of realizing when a hard drive crashes, you go into the backup and realize there's some error that was causing it to not run for the past three months or so, and then you're kind of screwed. So it's just a good idea, maybe once a month, just kind of go in and check that it's actually doing its job. The next tip is to quickly just vacuum off the fans of the computer just from the outside. So a lot of times the fan intakes will have dust filters on them, and then they can obviously build up some dust that they suck in without going into the computer, and that can restrict airflow. So just from the outside, just when you're vacuuming your house or whatever, just do a pass over the fans and just keep them nice. I wouldn't recommend opening up the case and using the vacuum on there inside because that can cause a lot of static electricity. So just stick to the outside, vacuuming the fans from the outside, and you should be fine. All right, up to number six, which is to do a deep virus scan. So I'm assuming you have some sort of antivirus, whether it's a third party antivirus or the one that's just built into Windows. Usually it does run on schedule, sometimes even every day. And a lot of times it runs in the background checking running programs and the automatic run will just do a kind of quick scan. So it'll scan the most common files and folders that might be infected by a virus. And again, scan any running programs, but not necessarily every file on your computer. So it's a good idea at least once a month to either schedule or manually run a deep scan. It might already be scheduled to do a deep scan every once in a while, but if it doesn't, you can just go in and manually run it. And this should scan pretty much every file on your computer. Again, this will take a long time, so you can maybe just let it run overnight, but it should give you a little bit more peace of mind. And really the quick scans are good for doing daily things, but again, they take not so long and don't use up as much resources. So if you really wanna be careful, a deep scan is good to do periodically. Now the final monthly tip is to just wipe down your monitor. When's the last time you did that? You might have just random dots all over it from either talking or maybe yelling at the computer while playing a game. If you're anything like me, you just kind of ignore it and you might only notice it when the screen goes dark or something and then they show up. But then when the screen gets bright again, you immediately forget about it and it just gets worse and worse over time. So I would say as part of your monthly maintenance, just kind of go ahead and wipe it down, get rid of all those things and it'll just look nicer. Now, some tips for doing this. I would not use Windex because that could potentially damage any coatings, especially if you're using a matte screen, which is not glass. I would definitely go and get some sort of specialized screen cleaner. So this might even be a glasses cleaner you have for glasses, which are designed to not affect any anti-reflective coatings, that sort of thing, that should be okay. They also make on Amazon, you get like screen cleaners. I'm sure they make them specifically, something like that. And then just wipe it down with a microfiber cloth, 
don't use a paper towel because that'll just leave a bunch of different fibers. That's no good. Use some microfiber cloth of some kind. All right, so those are the monthly tips. Now let's go into the tips that you should do not so often, maybe once a year or so. The first is to actually open up your computer case and dust it out. Now, I would definitely not recommend using a vacuum on the inside of your computer that could potentially generate a lot of static charge. Vacuums tend to generate a lot of static charge. What I would instead do is make sure the computer is off and you physically turn off the power supply switch and maybe still even keep it plugged in because that way the ground from the PSU will still be in effect and then it'll still ground all the components, but make sure it's off and the actual physical power supply switches off and then just use a thing of canned air and blow all the dust off of it. What I usually do is I do use a vacuum, but I kind of keep it off to the side. And then as the dust kind of flies up, I have the vacuum I kind of use to vacuum up the dust out of the air, not out of the computer directly, if that makes sense. You can also, if you have a air purifier or something in your house, you can put it next to the computer as you're dusting it off and that'll kind of suck it up and filter it all out. If it's really bad, if it's really dusty, you've never done this before, it might even be better to just take it outside and dust it out outside and blow all the dust out so you're not getting it in your house. And also, obviously, the frequency of how often you have to do this is gonna depend on your house. If you have a bunch of pets, if it's on the rug and stuff, you might be getting a lot more dust buildup than someone like me who just has a hard floor, or no pets or anything, which doesn't really get a lot of buildup in there. That's gonna have to be your decision. All right, now the final tip you should do every once in a while, probably at least once a year, is to properly vacuum out your keyboard. I'm not talking about just running the vacuum over the keys. I'm specifically talking about removing all the keys and vacuuming out all that crap that you had in there. You've probably never done this, so you could probably imagine it's gonna look disgusting. Now, the way I would recommend doing this is first of all, take a picture of the keyboard so you know the arrangement of the keys because when all of them are off, it might not be as easy to put them all back, especially if you have a bunch of media control keys that aren't in a standard location, something like that. You'll have a basic map of how to put them all back. And I'd also recommend it's way easier if you use a key cap removal tool. You can get these on Amazon. This is the one I have. It was like seven bucks. I'll put the link in the description and it makes it way easier to more properly remove the key off the keyboard without worrying about breaking it or snapping it or anything like that. And you could use a pen and just pry them off, but the key cap removal tool makes it so much easier, so much faster. So if you follow these tips, your computer should run a lot more smoothly over time and you won't have to do as much huge maintenance when things go wrong. So be sure to subscribe and also click the bell. I try to make new videos like this about twice a week. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I talk about 10 really cool Chrome extensions that you just gotta see. They're really cool and useful. So I'll put that link right here you can click on. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.